we've got a, a special treat for you today. We're going to work with something totally unique, totally so original, and so totally fits. What you're seeing here is called an Athena bracelet. And the Athena, as you'll notice, has beautiful curving interest to it with the rhinestones as well, with the design disc intact. But you'll notice how large the frame actually is because it's not meant to wear on the wrist, it's meant to wear on the upper arm. More of a Grecian style look. So I've attached this and we're going to put this together so you can see how it comes together. I'm going to undo the tie and those are super important that hold that design disc in place. So we're going to take those ap the ribbons apart here and to make sure that it stays in place, this is with all of the design discs, we want to make sure that we add an additional knot to them just to secure that, to know that it's not going anywhere. All right, so I'm going to tie that on, leave the ribbons for now, just kind of kick them out of my way. I'm ready to begin. This is going to be more of a vertical piece, so I have to keep that in mind as I'm, as I'm designing, that I don't want to get too far over because that way then it's going to lay on the outside of the arm. So I'm starting with some of the um, lily grass, and I bundled the lily grass and secured that with just a little bit of the uh, floral tape here. A couple loops and, and some of the larger pieces. I'm going to put this so it's shorter to the top and longer to the bottom. So I'm going to tie that in place. And again, this is more of a designer look. So we have to keep that in mind that when you, we normally think of adding our, the cost of our, our materials and basing the construction on that, on the cost of materials, this particular um, design, you're going to see that the materials are actually minimal, but it's more about the creativity and the labor that we're going to use here. It's not something that you're going to do in mass, meaning you're not going to do 40 or 50 of these. This is for that special client, that special customer who wants to make a unique statement. So I'm adding our foliage in here. And I've taken some of the larger pieces and looped them and taped them in place just to kind of give it again more of a textural look here. I'm going to cut those. Add that interest in. You can secure that and tie them in place if you like, depending on your construction preferred method. I kind of a combination of both. That's why I left those ties in case I want to go back in and add more to it at some later point. Going to continue that elongated look by using the eucalyptus here. Very light, very airy. And it just has that, that fantastic texture that I want to capture and, and put in here. So I'm using both the top and the bottom. layering that in place so you can see it already starts to lift your eye give it that dimension that I was talking about earlier now we want to make sure that we cut that really tight against so it doesn't look like something broke off a little bit of glue and shorter pieces to the top a longer more long, elongated look to the bottom. Nothing wrong with a couple pieces longer to the top. Now I've got my base pretty much intact and ready to go. Not that again I can't add more later, but for right now this is where we're going to work with. Believe it or not, we're going to use one of these beautiful Mondial roses. And you can see how exquisite, how beautiful, and how full that actually is. It's way too big to place one of those as a single unit. So I'm going to set this off and teach you how that I'm going to um, do a little something different. So I've taken the petals, starting from the outside earth petals, and I lay one on top of the other. 
fold, fold, and pleat it again. That becomes a floret. Now to hold it in place, as you can see, I've wrapped the bottom with the stem tape, the corsage tape. And I've done that multiple times to give me quite a few of the roses. So that's how I'm going to add my flowers in and take away a lot of that additional weight, that physical weight. Tuck those in, make sure they're in there good and firm. Now when you do the florets, you can put two or three of the petals together and, and depending on how full you actually want it to be, you can change and give each one a little bit more of a character. Um, I'm going to cut that calyx, that false calyx, pretty close. Dip it in my glue. Working that in. Again, keeping the sides fairly tight and conform. There's no wire in there. It's only held together with tape. those and again I'm coming kind of coming around for the outside here need to let that dry just a little bit let's do this one and each one of the florets as I said will turn out completely different and I like the fact that you can use these now in head pieces so when you do those crowns that are so popular they don't get heavy and bulky and it, obviously it takes less product when you only do one or two roses and it looks like you have quite a bit going on there. So we're adding again a few more. Dipping them in my glue. I'm gonna lay that in place. Kinda of need one more on this back side here. Cover up here in there and get it glued in fairly tight adding the beautiful iridescent leaves that coppery color leaf because as you'll notice the copper banding of the Athena dictates that we want to stay with that same color palette so we're going to add more copper or actually it's rose gold which is so strong right now rose gold we're seeing it in dresses, we're seeing it in jewelry, we're seeing it just about everywhere. So be mindful of what your customers are seeing. Add those shimmer leaves in place. And as you can see, it's a little labor intensive, but that's all right. Because we're ready, we're marketing, we have something unique, we have something different. And we don't want to make these for everybody that comes in the door. Add those in and I like the fact that they have a wire to them and you can roll those leaves you can change the shape if you like so after they glue in just a little bit more the glue sets up I'll give them a little bit of a curl just to add some interest in there as well what a unique flower isn't that great that's the center of the rose. After I peel off all the petals, I flip the rose upside down, inserted a wire, inserted a wire, and that's the center of the rose. It almost looks like a ranunculus or a very small tulip. Kind of, again, a fantasy flower. Put that in place. And then I'm just going to show you one more little trick. Hypericum berry. With my hypericum, I'm going to take my knife, put a little cut in the bottom of that hypericum, a little crisscross. Let me do it again. So I'm going to, at the bottom, stick my knife in, crisscross, squeeze that open, and then you can put those on the ends of your lily grass. So just a little 
technique there, add some fun, add some interest. You can take it as far as you like, you can add a lot more to it, or in my case, I think I'm just going to let it be. So as you can tell now by the Athena that is this way, we would actually stretch it out and place that on the young lady's upper arm and all that interest will lay right here. What a cool idea. Rose gold, so fashion forward, and just some different design techniques and construction techniques there for you. Enjoy.